Hi, and welcome to another Bowlers Mark Coaching Corner. I'm John Gaines, Vice President of Bowlers Mark, and with me today is Michael Bauer. Michael is our General Manager at Bowlers Mark inside Brunswick Harbor Lanes in Melbourne, Florida. Today, what we're going to talk about is a little bit about the physical game, kind of give you some tips and pointers on, on what to look for and how to work on your own game at times. So uh, today, what we're going to start with, we're going to start right with the stance. So Michael, go ahead and walk around there. So we're going we're gonna to start right with the stance and kind of give you some ideas of what that should look like and then get into each particular step. Uh, we'll even talk a little bit about timing. Uh, one of the things I really want to discuss today is a little bit about the arm swing and release also. Uh, everybody wants to work on their arm swing and release and try to make it better. I will tell you that the arm swing and release is a result of how you get to the foul line. Your arm is meant just to kind of swing back and forth in, in a nice gentle motion, just like walking. You know, we walk every day and the arm swings by itself. It doesn't go all of a sudden, you know, you're kind of walking down the street, your arm doesn't all of a sudden do this. So when you're, when, if your arm swing, you know, the chicken wing is a, is a perfect example. If you get to the foul line and you kind of your elbow gets outside the ball, that chicken wing motion, or you get over top of it and there's not a whole lot of power, you can work on that all you want, but you're not really working on the root cause. So if you do chicken wing it or get outside, you know, outside the ball and kind of spin it, it's a result of, of something else that's going on. Normally what happens when you chicken wing the ball, uh, the, 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 the pec area, the shoulder lunges forward or you have too much forward spine angle. And what happens is that causes that elbow to roll on the outside of the, of the ball and you, you're going to get around the side of the ball. So starting with the stance, this is what we're going to kind of look for. This is an ideal position right here. What I look for, um, what I look for is having the ball line up with the seam of the shirt. So, right in that area. So the center of the ball should line up through the center of the hand, going through the center of the forearm, right there at the seam of the shirt. Also notice Michael's shoulder tilt. You are supposed to drop your shoulder. Contrary to what some of us were taught many, many years ago, oh, you're dropping your shoulder. Guess what? You're supposed to drop your shoulder. The reason is, is the ball is 27 inches in circumference. The diameter of that bowling ball is eight, about eight and a half inches. It has to get out of the way of the hip. Okay, your hip has to get out of the way for it to swing back and forth. So ideally, go ahead and swing one, Michael. Just kind of swing back and forth. That shoulder does have to drop. So take your shoulders, Michael, and, and, and put them straight, and look where the ball goes. All of a sudden, it's going, it's going to go right into the leg. If you're right-handed, it's going to go right into that right leg. So you do have to drop your shoulder uh, and, and the, at the release, and even at the stance is where you want to start that. This is a great position to be in. Also, to help get that right hip out of the way, if you kind of look at the bottom there where Michael's feet are, he's got his right foot slightly back. That will also help get that hip out of the way right from the get-go, right from the, to get you off to a really good start. So even in the stance, this is an outstanding stance to, to, to start with. And you know, this is the first thing I'm going to look at, look at. You know, as far as for hand position, you know, in the stance, it's kind of whatever feels comfortable to you. It can be a little bit on the side of the ball. It can be you know, underneath the ball. What I do look for is the support of the left hand. Uh, Norm Duke probably does this better than anybody. He uses, he puts probably about 50% of the weight in his right hand, but he, he, the other 50% is in his left hand, and then he'll help, he'll take his left hand and actually use that to help guide the ball into the swing. Okay, so kind of what we're going to look for in that in that first uh, couple steps. Michael's a five-step approach, so Michael's going to take that first step with his left foot, and then push out over top with over top of his right. Correct. That's kind of what we're going to look for. Move the camera back a little bit here, give Michael a little bit more room. So again, Michael's a five step. So in, for him, his push away is going to come in that second step. So he's going to take his first step and then right over top of his right foot is ideal. Ideally, you want to move the ball with that, uh, if you're five step, you want to move that ball with your second step. It doesn't have to be exactly that, however. Uh, for many, many years, timing was measured how we get the ball started. 
and I will tell you uh, that that is wrong. We'll go over where to look at timing uh, here in a few few minutes. Uh, timing is where the ball is more at the release, not really when you get started. Um, and you can thank Mark Baker uh, for, for kind of finding that. Um, he he uh, looked at many, many professional players and you know, kind of like, what makes them better? What makes them, why are they different than your average player? And he went through it step by step and one of the places he found it was the timing spot. And that timing spot is when the slide foot gets flat on the ground, the ball should be parallel to the floor. And the examples that he used, uh, if I told you that Tommy Jones and Carolyn Doran Ballard were in the same timing spot, nobody would probably believe me. Tommy gets the ball started instantly into a swing. So Michael kind of demonstrate that a little bit where Tommy literally just pushes it instantly, exactly. And then what he does is he runs underneath the ball where Carolyn is more textbook and she starts it right over top of that foot. But both of them get to the same spot, that timing spot, so when the slide foot gets flat on the ground, right there, the ball should be parallel to the floor, and then you're just going to follow through from there. That's an ideal place to be. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to move the camera over to the side. We're going to watch Michael throw a couple, and we'll kind of dissect this game a little bit. Again, I work with Michael on a somewhat regular basis. Got a really solid game. Excellent position to foul on there. So even when you're, you know, it's even important if you're going to try to video yourself, to video yourself from the right place. Um, if you're right-handed, use the right-hand lane on a pair. Uh, we're on 33 and 4 today at Brunswick Harbor Lanes in Melbourne and we're uh, Michael is bowling on lane 34 and I am actually uh, videoing this from lane 36 awesome yeah, another high flush shot there really solid starting position uh, Michael's swing gets gets back and forth very straight we'll, we'll get to the back view a little bit and uh, I'll show you what I look for there but where that timing spot is, is right when that slide foot gets flat to the ground, the ball should be parallel. Right there. Something else to look for that, that, that Michael does very well is keeping his chin behind his slide knee. That's also very important keep the chin behind or even on top of your slide knee. Do not let it get over top of that slide knee. Do not let it, do not have too much spine angle. Great balance. Awesome control. So one of the drills that we work on quite a bit uh, to help this, the one step drill. So Michael, Michael's going to demonstrate that one step drill. This is not about creating power. This is not uh, about creating any speed. This is literally just to help the technique. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna swing the ball first and then slide. Just swing the ball first and then slide. So again, we're not really concerned about where the ball goes or how hard it is. This is strictly working on technique and balance. Uh, working on where the left arm is, working on where the trail leg goes. Yes, the left arm and, and your, or if you're right-handed, the left arm and trail leg, right trail leg are also just as important. So watch this again and again. To do this, you're going to swing the ball first and then slide and let it go. And so if, if you're really struggling with your balance, this is an outstanding drill to, 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 work, to work on. It's not the most fun drill. The kids hate doing it. Love working in the youth leagues, and yeah, Michael's laughing too. Um, they really hate doing it. It's boring. It's not a lot of fun. High school kids don't like doing it either. Correct. High school kids don't like it. It works. I do this. Michael does this. It really does work. It's an outstanding drill. Again, it's not about speed. It's not about power. <clears throat> working on technique and balance. So 
So one more there, Michael, with the one-step drill. So again, work on this one-step drill. It only takes 10, 15 minutes. It's not like you got to do this for hours and hours. So we're going to swing the ball first and then let it go. Great balance. Notice the, the uh, trail leg. The trail leg is not going straight back. It's going to the side. And the left arm is out for balance. Good morning from Hawaii. It's pretty early in Hawaii. Do you ever use like full like stationary foul line drills in the lessons or? Yeah, absolutely. Show the stationary drill. I'm probably too far away from you. So what this works, what this helps with, is helps get your wrist and hand uh, behind the ball. So if you're having an issue staying behind the ball, this is also a great drill. Um, if you're not quite limber enough, uh, like, like myself, I'm 6'5", a little older, uh, sometimes it's actually even easier to get down on one knee. So Michael kind of show that same drill, but, but do it on one knee, okay? So this might be a little bit easier. So what he's going to do, he's going to get down on, on one knee, and he's going to bring the ball back and kind of hold it there for a second. So what we're looking at here, you can keep it on the ground. Go ahead and keep it on the ground. So what we're looking at here is in order to create any lift and rot proper rotation, um, if, if you look at the bowling ball and we look at the equator, we want to have the fingers under the equator of the bowling ball. So in, in this case, Michael is probably, it's about pretty far under the, the, the equator of the ball. This drill will help you feel what that's supposed to feel like. Because put your hand on top, Michael, like that, that's a really bad position. That, that makes it very difficult to uh, one, get out of the ball cleanly because it's going to hang up, exactly, it's going to hang up on the thumb, and two, it's virtually impossible to create any lift and rotation. So this is another great drill. If you're, if you're having issues creating, you know, man, I want more power, can't figure out how to, you know, how, how those, you know, how the guys on tour, you know, how they create all that lift and rotation, this is an outstanding drill. It puts your hand and wrist, it gives you an idea of what it's supposed to feel like and not on top of it like that, correct. So go ahead and do one. Yeah, so right from there, and just let it go, and just give it a good push, just like that. Again, another real simple drill, but it will help you feel what it's supposed to feel like, because most people don't, most bowlers don't know what it's even supposed to feel like, and the, the one-step drill, and then that stationary drill at the foul line, that will definitely help you get a better sensation of exactly what it's supposed to feel like. So do that one more time for us, Michael. Got people from all over tuning in. Really appreciate it. Ohio, Idaho, Texas, Pennsylvania. Awesome. So as you can see, that makes it a lot easier to get the sensation of what it's supposed to feel like to try to stay behind the ball. So again, that, that one-step drill is a good drill and then even the stationary drill. Again, it's it's it gets boring, but I, I will tell you, just, just 10 minutes of doing that can really help you get the sensation and feeling of what it's supposed to feel like. So go ahead and throw a normal shot now, Michael. So the two-handed bowler, the question, how about a two-handed bowler? It, it would be very hard to do the stationary drill, uh, keeping your other your opposite hand on the ball, but absolutely you can do the one-step drill. Uh, one of the better two-handers here in, uh, in, the, in the Central Florida area, Daniel Bolin. Um, I, I've worked with Daniel a couple of times, and it is one of the things that, that we have done is, is work on that one step. So literally, e e even if you're two-handed, it's still the same sensation where you kind of swing the ball first and then slide. Got a comment that really helped my game quite a, average quite a bit from Philip. And I don't know how well you can hear the sound of the pins, but if you've been in the bowling center long enough, you can tell when it's high flush and it just has a different sound. So again, what we're kind of looking for here, that, that timing spot. Okay, I'm not really concerned necessarily when you get started as long as you're getting to that timing spot. If you're not getting to the timing spot, then we will address on how to get started a little bit better. And at the proper time, 
to make sure you get to that timing spot. And again, for those of you just tuning in, the timing spot is when the slide foot gets flat on the floor. So Michael's going to demonstrate. When that slide foot gets, walk up to the foul line right there. When that sliding foot gets flat to the floor, your backswing should be parallel to the floor. Again, thank you, Mark Baker, for finding that. It's been an outstanding, outstanding find. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, me and my, another comment, me and my pro shop operator have been doing this, these drills a couple months and definitely is great. Correct. What Michael was saying, in case you can't hear it, is you know when you get in that timing spot, you just you transfer that that power momentum to the ball so much cleaner, so much less effort. So that's, that's really what it is. It's 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 not about creating powerless effort. It's creating effortless power, and and that's where getting to that timing spot you know really helps. It creates that effortless power. Another really good shot there. Yeah, really good shot right there. So again, you know, that, that's the main thing that I'm going to look for. You know, we started with the stance and where it should be, and then uh, you know, looking at the sign, looking at a little bit of momentum, uh, looking at timing. You know, one of the things I, I find amusing, one of the worst tips in bowling today, is your feet are too fast. And I will tell you that your feet cannot be too fast. It is the relationship of where the ball is to your, to your feet in each step. I'm not telling anybody to run, but I will tell you that your feet can't really be too fast as long as the ball's in the correct position. If you tell somebody to slow down their feet, they will, but what's going to happen is, is the ball's not going to slow down. The momentum of the ball's not going to slow down. Uh, you have a heavy object in your hand, and I don't really care how strong you are. Once that ball starts to move, um, it's going to keep moving at, at, at a certain pace. So, you know, the, the, another question I'll ask is, you know, would you consider this a sport? Would you consider bowling a sport? And I'm hoping 99% of you say absolutely, right? Yeah, I get sweaty, I get tired. Yeah, absolutely. You know, th this is definitely a sport. So the question I'll ask is, name me another sport where you slow down. And normally nobody can answer that because you don't. You always have to build momentum. Again, I'm not telling anybody to run, but you do have to build constant momentum, constant speed. In order to create power, you have to create momentum. So you don't slow your feet down. I might tell somebody to start a little bit slower, you know, with a little less pace, or even in the push away. You know, not, not creating so much uh, pace in the push away. However, I'm not going to tell anybody to slow their feet down because normally when they slow their feet down is not the correct time. They're normally going to slow it down halfway through the approach, and that's not a good position. Or they slow down, but they don't slow down the push away with it. So, decelerating. Correct. They decelerate halfway through, and that's not a good place to do it. So, yes, you, you do want to start off at a slightly soft pace, and especially in that push away, and then accelerate there. Correct. Again, another really good shot. So start off, you know, with a nice soft pace, and even the push away. You want to, your push away should be soft and somewhat controlled. Yes, it should be free, but you still want to control that a little bit. You don't want to get it in, you know, fired into your swing. Um, you know, Tommy Jones, he does get it into a swing, but look how fast his feet go. His feet keep up with his push away. And there's still shape there, so there's no sharp. Pressure. Correct, correct. So, yeah, you know, what Michael was saying there is even though Tommy gets it into a swing fairly fast, it's, there's, there's still some shape there. So the question is, how do you address the outstretched balanced arm and thumb down position for shoulder rotation? Okay, the balance arm, the balance arm can really be in a multiple, multitude of places. Um, it, it, it can be, let me get in front of the camera here. It, it, 
it can be straight out here, it can be slightly in front, it can be slightly behind, it can be slightly down, it can be slightly up. The one that I normally look for is I just don't want it on, on the knee. So it can be in a lot of different places. The big one is that it not really jerks backwards very quickly. Because what that is going to do is that is going to get that other shoulder, that opposite shoulder involved. And that, that's where that thumb down is going to happen. So again, most of the time, the thumb down, getting over the top of it, spinning it, that's a result of that shoulder getting too engaged or lunging forward or the spine angle going too forward. Okay, so the shoulder should swing, the ball should swing from the shoulder, but just back and forth. Michael, walk up here. Okay, so just swing. That's really all the swing should do. It shouldn't lunge forward. So show what, what we mean by that. So it shouldn't, exactly, it shouldn't lunge forward. So if there's a lot of core rotation, or that left, in this case, because Michael's right-handed, the left arm, that trail arm, if that trail arm pivots too quickly or too hard, it will take that right shoulder and throw it forward. And you're more than likely that elbow is going to get outside the ball, which causes the thumb to go down. So Michael, show him the correct way to, to rotate the wrist. If you watch Michael's wrist, it's just his wrist. His elbow actually stays still. Okay, so the, the wrist rotates, but the, but the elbow does not. So if you just stand there, if you take your right shoulder and just go forward, don't even swing, exactly, that's what happens. So if you watch that elbow, if that shoulder goes forward, that elbow is going to roll. It's just how we're made, and we're human beings, and how we're kind of put together. If that shoulder rolls forward, the elbow is going to get outside the ball, and that's going to cause that thumb down position. So how I would out, how I, I would address it is try to keep that pec area or shoulder or core rotation just a little quieter. Okay, go ahead and throw another one. It almost to me feels like my shoulders are doing a little bit more rotating this way as opposed to Correct, correct. So we'll watch one or two more from the side. Right, and even in the push away, you, you don't want to have too much of that shoulder engaged. It's something in the, when I work with Mark, I'm very fortunate. I get to I coach with Mark, but I also work with Mark on my own physical game. Um, it's one thing he yells at me all the time about about in my push away about getting my shoulder too engaged uh, right from the get go. So, question: I find the lower I get the foul line, the more likely I am to come around the side of the ball instead of staying behind it. Is that something symptomatic, specific? Or would you need to see it happen? Um, when you, there's, there's a couple possibilities there. Um, getting low to the foul line, that's kind of a wives' tale also. Um, I've heard, you know, feel like you're sitting in a chair. I don't know about you. Um, I, first of all, I can't get that low. And even when I was a kid and in good shape, I, I still couldn't get that low. Um, very few people uh, get that low. Um, you do want to use your legs. You can't be stiff-legged, but it's not as it's not as much as everybody thinks. So, and there's also more than likely when you feel like you're getting low to the ground. Exactly, it's probably more than likely your eyes getting closer to the ground, not really using your legs. Do that again, Michael. Show that again. So, what most bowlers would do when they they want to get lower. They get lower in the wrong direction. They get lower from the spine angle, correct? So your eyes are getting closer to the floor, but you're not actually lower to the ground. Your shoulders should remain over top of your hips, over top of your legs. Well, low is pretty vague anyway. Like, low is not really a, a destination. Like, how low is the correct amount? Right, and, and like Michael was saying, you know, that, that's right out of Mark's uh, book, uh, The Game Changer. You know, what, what is low? You know, that, that's a destination. So, you know, what is the correct amount? Um, I'm more concerned about the spine angle, not about how low you're going to get. What's the best way to, to lengthen the backswing? Uh, if, if you want to lengthen your back backswing, you got to go faster. Honestly, if you move your feet faster, your arm will get longer. Okay, and, and I'm not really concerned about how high the backswing gets. The backswing is a result of how limber you are, how stiff you might be. Uh, your backswing will go where it's supposed to go as long as everything else is in the correct position. Again, it's just how we're made. You want to 
try to create a little more backswing, my guess is you're looking for a little bit more speed. That actually comes from the feet. Move your feet faster. If you walk, your arms swing at one speed. If you run, they swing at another speed. So if you want your ball to go down the lane faster, move your feet faster. You will throw it harder. Michael, somebody wants you to show that uh, the wrist position again. Yeah. Can you show that wrist action again? Walk up here, do the, uh, do the drill up here, and then we'll show you what we meant about what the hand is supposed to do uh, without the ball. So again, what we're trying to do is, is put that, keep those fingers below the equator of the ball. You can see where his wrist is. That's a great position there. And just going back and forth. Everybody talks about that flat spot at the bottom of the swing. The floor creates it for you. Right, right. And what Michael was talking about there, in case you couldn't hear, they're talking about the flat spot. This will also help you feel what it's supposed to feel like. It's creating that little bit of a flat spot at the bottom of the swing. You want to think of your arm as a lever. So the longer that lever can be, the more power you'll impart on the ball. So here's what the wrist should do. Um, there's also a great video on YouTube. It's 13 minutes and 33 seconds long. I've watched this thing many, many times. Um, I believe it's the 2013 World Championships. If you go to YouTube and use the keywords bowling release slow motion, okay, go to YouTube, bowling release slow motion, type in uh, or type in those keywords. The video is 13 minutes and 33 seconds long. Watch that. It is probably the best video I've ever seen. Super high resolution, uh, but slow motion so you can see it, and it will show you exactly what the wrist is supposed to do. Okay, this is actually a perfect time for this question. How can I keep from stepping out of my shot during the follow-through? Okay, one of those tip, one of the, the drills to do is the one-step drill. Um, if, you, if you do that one-step drill, again, this will help you um, work on your balance and technique. So if you're, if, you're, if you're stepping out of it, if you're right-handed and you're falling off to the right, this is a great drill for that. Keep your trail leg back and behind you. Keep your shoulders over top of your hips. And that will help you with some of that balance. So the, the, the reason I also said it's a good time for that question is now we're going to look from behind and watch the footwork because it could also be something in the footwork. So we're going to move the camera. Okay, go ahead, Michael. So now the camera view from here. Go ahead. We're good. Get right on the right shoulder. And then watch the footwork. Good shot from behind. High flush. We're going to move it off a little bit to the side. There a little bit. Okay, so when I'm watching from behind, um, I'm going to watch the swing plane. the camera up right on the kind of right on the right shoulder if you're right-handed and what I'm gonna look for here is the ball should be covering the head ideally the ball should be covering the head um, again it doesn't have to be perfect <clears throat> and when I say by covering the head it's not a matter of how high it gets it just should be in line so the ball should should be just about covering the head or maybe just slightly inside the head you just don't you definitely don't want it outside of the head so right there is what I look for get that ball going back inside get it going nice and close to the ankle and the hip also for the uh, for the footwork um, you know, you, you'll hear the term crossover quite a bit, and in reality, it, it really doesn't cross over. It's okay if it crosses in front of. Tip the down a little bit. Yeah, you don't you don't want to cross over. Cross in front of is okay, and maybe even to the little bit to the outside. That's perfect. That's where I first it. Right about there. 
but you don't want to cross over. If you're crossing over, it, it, the ball gets away from you. The ball gets away from you, and it really will throw your swing uh, in a direction that it's really not supposed to go. <clears throat> so you, you do want to cross in front, in front of, or even just to the outside, and you should drift a little bit. If you're if you're right-handed, you should walk away from the ball a little bit, and it it creates room for the swing for the ball to come back down through. The big thing you don't want to do is to walk, if you're right-handed, you do not want to walk to the right. You don't want to walk back into your swing. A uh, question came in, uh, is there an optimum number of times or amount of time to do the one-step drill? Again, it, it, it's really up to the individual bowler. I'm going to tell you, if, if you just if you went to a practice session, if you just did it ten times, that's enough. It, it, it's not hours and hours and hours. If you do it ten or fifteen times, that's outstanding. The big thing is is the practice. None of this works unless you actually get to the lanes and practice on the And that doesn't mean in the league. You know, you got to worry about score in league. Practice is not about score. Practice is about technique. And, and creating consistency. A good way to get yourself loosened up after you stretch. Correct. How do I increase my rev rate? Rev rate comes from how fast the hand rotates around the ball. Um, it also comes from momentum, and it also comes from the proper leverage. Uh, to create that proper leverage, you use that one-step drill, and also use the stationary drill at the foul line, and then and then to create the rev rate comes from the faster the hand can do that motion uh, from underneath the ball properly. It's not really necessarily behind the ball, but definitely underneath the equator. The faster that happens, the higher the rev rate becomes. Does it make a difference where you hold the ball? Are you talking about in the stance, Christine? If you are, ideally somewhere around around waist high, belly button high, is, is all you're really looking for. I don't want to see it below the, the belt line, and I, I don't want to see it up around the chest area. Somewhere around the belly button or waist is, is ideal. I'm legally blind. Is there something closer I can look at on the lane other than the arrows? There's a set of dots that are about five feet past the foul line. Uh, you can use those dots. Uh, question from Britain. I fade right in my approach, and I also have a hard time hitting my mark consistently. How can I fix that? If you're right-handed and you're drifting right, um, that is going to cause your swing to bump because your hip is in the way. Uh, you need to work on drifting, well, at least walking straight, if not drifting even a little bit to the left. So ideally what I would do is uh, if you're right-handed, put your left foot on board 15 and then literally walk towards the center dot, which is board 20. It's not easy. When you're working on the footwork, that is not something that's easy to do. I'm not, not going to lie to you. It's very difficult. But you, you, if you walk into your swing, the reason you're inconsistent is because your, your, your body, your hip especially, is not getting out of the way each time consistently, and you're walking into your swing. So what I would tell you to do is, is put your left foot on 15, and then just walk toward that middle dot. I don't care where the ball goes initially, just do it in practice. I don't care where it goes, I don't care how hard you throw it, stand on 15 and walk to 20 and just keep working on drifting a little bit left and getting that, that hip out of the way if you're right-handed. How do you avoid muscling the ball and let the ball flow freely? More than likely, your feet, believe it or not, your feet are actually not moving fast enough. In order to create a free swing, your feet should be slightly faster than the swing of the ball. I'll say that again. In order to create a free swing, the feet need to be faster than the pace of the arm swing. Not by much, but they do have to stay, stay ahead of the arm pace. So if you're having a problem muscling the ball, that could be one thing. Actually move your feet a little bit faster. The other thing could be just simple fit. If your 
thumb hole is, is, is not uh, tight enough, uh, it's going to cause you to squeeze it and you are going to muscle it. Yeah, yeah, Michael was kind of pulling at the top, and what we did with Michael is we changed your pitches a little bit. Yep. Uh, Michael had a little bit too much reverse. Uh, again, as we get older, <laughs> as he's laughing, as we get a little bit older, uh, we, we do start to lose a little bit of grip strength, and we also start to lose flexibility. Um, you know, go to your pro shop operator, go to your pro shop technician, have them check your pitches. You should be checking those those holes and, and, and thumb, you know, the thumb hole and the finger holes and the angles of pitches. You should be checking that once a year. Great time to do it is August to September, right as the league season starting. And uh, you know, again, as we get older and less flexibility, um, you need to go a little bit more forward uh, in, in your thumb pitches. That'll help you hang on to the ball. So that could be another reason why you're muscling is the, the either the hole sizes aren't correct or the pitches aren't correct. Can we see the approach for a ten pin? So Michael's going to shoot a spare. Um, it, it, yeah, attempt. Um, it, it really, it, it's going to be the same. It, it's, it's really. I'll move the camera a little bit. So where I stand and Michael's in the same spot. Um, I put my left foot on 35. What's your target, Michael? 21. Okay. I look at 20. So we're literally within a board. So for a 10-10, I put my left foot on 35. And I aim for the middle arrow, and Michael's going to aim for 21. But the approach itself is really no different. There you go. It was really no different. He did the hand position. Um, he went to a weaker position, so kind of step in front of the camera and show that weaker position. And this is the opposite of what you want to do in the first ball. Correct. So we're trying to, and actually turn sideways. There we go. So the first ball, we're trying to cre create a little bit of tension in that wrist uh, to help uh, keep the fingers under the equator of the ball. And then on the spare, it's just the opposite. You want to break that wrist back and get the fingers more on top of the equator. And that makes it very hard to create any lift and rotation. So you want to throw the ball as straight as possible uh, at, at a 10 pin. And even, ide even more ideally, use a spare ball. Use a plastic ball. Best bowlers in the world. 98% uh, of them use a, use a plastic ball for their spares. There's a reason. And they can throw it pretty hard. It just it takes the lane out of play. You don't have to worry about how much oil is on the lane, how little oil is on the lane. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a long pattern, a short pattern. Doesn't matter if it's, if it's the first game or third game. If you use a spare ball, a plastic ball, you're going to stand in the same spot every time and use the same target. So have some sort of uh, program. Michael Culp, why do I keep leaving the 10 pin? First question I'm going to ask you is the ring 10 or 5 pin? Um, and there is a difference. The ring 10 is when the 6 pin gets up and around the 10. Uh, the flat 10 is when the 6 pin lays in the gutter. Uh, either way, uh, if you keep leaving the 10 pin, um, it's not that particular bowling center. Um, I've been fortunate to bowl around the world. I'm going to tell you, I've bowled in about 300 different bowling centers. I've left a 10 pin in every single bowling center I've ever bowled in, okay? Um, if you're constantly leaving a 10 pin, you're either standing in the wrong spot or you're using the wrong ball. I, I don't know how else to tell you, I'm not trying to be nasty about it, but if you keep leaving the 10 pin, you're not standing in the right place on the lane or you're not using the, the correct uh, bowling ball and correct surface. If it's a flat 10, when the 6 pin lays in the gutter, that was definitely not a flat 10. Um, if it's a flat 10, the 6 pin lays in the gutter, that means your ball is too strong. It's using up too much energy. It's got too much surface. Uh, you need something weaker, something shinier. If you're leaving a ring 10, your ball is going a little bit too far down the lane and you want something to roll up a little bit sooner. So a ring 10 would be a little bit stronger ball, a little bit more surface. A flat 10, that's a flat 10 right there. That, the flat 10, Michael changed his hand position. That's pretty good, by the way, to call that out. Michael changed his hand position. Uh, it was very flat, end over end. It didn't have enough entry angle. So in that case, you can either create more rotation around the side of the ball or go to something shinier that would uh, create more back end motion. How do you stop the swing from going behind your back? Um, good question. 
um, more than likely that's coming in your push away. So Michael, kind of stand up there. And if your swing is going behind you, it's actually normally a result of the push away. If your push away goes to the right, it causes the swing to go back and behind. So the fix for that is to push more in line with the seam of the shirt, correct. If you push more in line with the seam of the shirt, you're more than likely to go more back and forth. So if the swing is getting tucked in behind you, check your push away. It's probably going out to the right, which will cause the swing to get tucked in behind you. I don't use a thumb hole, so I barely have a back swing. Can I still throw a good consistent shot? Absolutely. No question. Two-handers. Jason Belmonte doesn't use a thumb. He's two-handed. Um, if you're uh, Tom Doherty, Tom Doherty uh, also doesn't use a thumb. Um, he doesn't use his thumb, but he doesn't use his opposite hand. So if you're using both hands, I would suggest watching some video of Belmonte. It, it, one of the best in the world. Um, if you're uh, not using your thumb, if you're still single hand bowler, uh, not using the opposite hand, look up some video of either Mike Miller or Tom Doherty. And both those guys are players multiple titles but yes you can still create a consistent shot and not have a whole lot of backswing I seem to want to move my hips on the downswing of the five-step approach uh, it actually should start to move down in the downswing so that Michael put the, put the ball down for a sec so in the downswing if that right shoulder is in the right spot, exactly, exactly. The right shoulder starts to drop. The hips should also at least stay level, if not go down. And where that should be is right there. That hip goes down, and then that trail leg goes to the side. That helps get that hip out of the way right there. So your, your right hip should, if you're right-handed, your right hip should actually start to go down and at worst stay level. The worst thing is is when it goes up. That will also cause you to kind of dump the ball when the hip goes up. That's a common move I see at the foul line. That that hip goes up. You know that that's that's one of those common things of you got to stay down at the foul line. Most of the time, it's 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 not really staying down with your legs as much as not changing the spine angle. If you keep your hip level, your spine angle doesn't change, and also help you keep your balance and create a lot of good leverage. So your hips should actually go down a little bit. Why would my ball flip one time and the other time it just slides or, or, or won't hook in the back? Um, there's a couple different things. You know, if, if it's you, the bowler, you know, uh, uh, you know, consistency-wise, start doing some of those one-step drills or the stationary drill at the foul line to make sure you're consistent with your release. If you feel like you're still throwing a good shot and there's just something going on where, you know what, I threw that okay, but it, it just didn't go in the back, it didn't, as you say, flip in the back, I'm going to tell you that's the wrong ball. Um, you actually need a weaker ball. More than likely, you're using too strong a ball, and it's using too much energy, and it's just going to kind of roll out. So if, if it's definitely not you, because the first thing we do, we do have to look at ourselves. We have to be honest. Um, it's very easy to blame the lanes and blame the ball and well, we got to look at ourselves in the mirror first You know, did I throw it okay? And, and if you threw it okay, if you truly can honestly answer, you know what, that was okay Then you definitely need to change balls and if it's not flipping consistently in the back More than likely it's too strong of a ball and the lanes are too dry for that particular ball And you actually want to use something shinier or weaker I have trouble keeping my arms straight on my backswing and release. Uh, when you say straight, is it getting behind you? Is it getting out to the side? Um, if, if, if it's getting behind you, that, that again, that's the push away. If it's getting behind you, more than likely your, your push away is going, to, if you're right-handed, your push away is going to the right. If it's getting away from you, you might be actually pushing inward toward your body too much in your push away. Um, but more than likely, most people, um, it doesn't go away from their body, it goes behind them. So if you're having a problem uh, keeping your arms straight on, on the backswing and release. Now if you're talking about the elbow being bent, 
Um, it's okay to have a little bit of bend in the elbow. Um, if you really watch Tommy Jones closely in slow motion, he does actually have a little bit of bend in his elbow. Um, if you're bending your elbow consistently and just can't keep it straight, more than likely that's the fit of the ball. As Michael's flexing his, yep, the fit. Um, the, again, the, the holes are too big uh, and, the, and the pitches aren't correct. More than likely the, the holes are too big causes you to squeeze it and then you're going to cradle it with your elbow. So if you're having problem bending your elbow and can't keep it straight, um, I would actually check the, the hole sizes and what you might feel is tight enough may not be. I have a problem with going across my body instead of coming straight out of the ball, putting to try to put more rotation on it. Um, that's stand in front of the camera again, Michael. That's going to be too much core rotation or getting that shoulder too involved. If, if, if you're kind of coming over top of it or pulling it, trying to create that rotation, um, that's just not keeping the, your core quiet enough. You're, you're getting your shoulder too engaged. Um, don't throw with your upper body. Again, any sport there is, if you go to any elite athlete, he will tell you that his legs are the most important. It's not a matter of how low, but in our sport, it's, it's that spine angle. Keeping the shoulders over top of your legs, over top of your hips to get those legs engaged. So if you're kind of coming across the body, more than likely you're, you're uh, not using your legs properly, your spine angle, probably straightening up. That, that right, if you're right-handed, that right hip is going up, causing your spine angle to straighten up, and then you have nothing left but to use your arm and shoulder to try to create any power and speed. So actually keep your, uh, keep your spine angle a little quieter and uh, keep a little bit more forward and keep that hip level. Don't let that hip come up. On some of that, you just think like a baseball pitcher on a mound versus off a mound. Their arms move in the same speed, yeah. but they, they throw the ball 15, yeah, 20 miles an hour base, faster off a mound. Just because right, because of the forward momentum. The yeah, yeah, the forward momentum on, on a, uh, off the mound. Uh, what's a good way to work on your timing? Uh, identify the timing spot. The timing spot is when the slide foot is flat on the ground. The ball should be parallel to the floor. Take a video camera. Get, if you're right-handed, get on the right lane. On this case, we're on uh, 33 and 4. Michael's bowling on the right lane on lane 34. I would take a video camera at the foul line and put it on lane 36. And then when your slide foot gets flat on the ground, make sure that ball is parallel to the ground. Uh, once this video is posted, uh, we talked about that at the beginning uh, uh, of this uh, live cast, and you can go back in and kind of watch what that's supposed to look like. Yeah, I've been told I'm constantly rolling a backup ball and I don't know how I'm doing it. What causes a ball to, to back up? Um, this is this is surely the, it's just an opposite rotation of the wrist. So put the ball down, Michael, and kind of show what we're talking about. So if you're right-handed, conventionally, the ball's going to rotate counterclockwise. Okay, the wrist is going to rotate counterclockwise. If you're throwing a backup ball, what they call backup ball, uh, the, the wrist is now going to go in a clockwise motion if you're right-handed. I'm going to tell you it's absolutely fine. As long as you can create some sort of angle, there, there's many guys out there, April, that tell you, oh, no, no, you can't, you can't throw a backup ball. What difference does it make? As long as you're creating some entry angle to the pocket, it doesn't matter what, ang what, what side of the lane it's coming from, if it's coming from right to left or left to right. As long as there's some sort of entry angle, it's fine. Work on, do, do the one-step drill, the same thing. Just do that one-step drill, work on the consistency. But it's okay to throw a backup ball. There's nothing wrong with it. 300 rings don't say backup ball. 300. No, no. They, they score, score, score. It's not how, it's how many. And as long as there's entry angle, again, it doesn't matter, April, okay? So to become more consistent, do some of those one step drills. That, that will help you. There's nothing wrong with throwing a backup ball. How do you stop a seven pin on a good shot if you're right handed? Um, most of the time, the. The, there's two pins that are going to normally knock down the seven. The five will get into the seven, or the four pin gets into the seven. Um, on a super high flush hit, the, the, the one goes into the two, the two and the four, and the four and the seven. On kind of that half pocket hit, the more traditional hit, the five goes into the seven. 
if you're kind of leaving that blower seven where the five goes uh, just in front of the seven or just behind it, um, the ball's not high flush enough or the ball's not continuing enough through the pocket. If it's not continuing enough through the pocket, more than likely the ball's a little bit too strong, it's rolling a little bit too early, it's very similar to a flat 10. Uh, the blower 710 is the exact same thing. Um, the blower 710 is the exact same thing. You know, everybody thinks it's a bad break. I'm going to tell you, yeah, it's a bad break. You hit the pocket, but it, it's the wrong ball. The ball's, the ball's a little bit too strong and not going through the pins the right way. So if you're leaving that half, that half seven on a good shot, actually uh, use a little shinier ball, a little weaker ball. Get the ball down the lane a little bit easier and the ball will continue through the pocket better. Uh, how do you stop a 10 pin on a pocket shot? We've, we've kind of covered that. Uh, flat 10, ring 10. Flat 10 is when the 6 pin uh, lays in the gutter, your ball is too strong. Ring 10 is when the 6 pin goes up and around the 10 um, and you need, you need something uh, stronger. So if flat 10 is too strong a ball, the weak 10 is not weak. Uh, the flat 10 or weak 10 is too strong of a ball. The ring 10 is when the ball goes too far down the lane and you need something to roll a little bit sooner. Why does a 10 pin always stand when you go over top of the ball? Uh, if you go over top of the ball, Brian, it's not really a good shot. It may have hit the pocket, but that doesn't make it a good shot. You at least gave it an opportunity, but it doesn't mean it's a good shot. If you go over top of the ball, the ball's not going to continue through the pins properly. It's just going to kind of skid, and it's just not going to drive through the pins the right way, more than likely leaving a flat 10. Lefty forward, if I have a timing step in my approach right before my slide, should I readjust my approach? Not necessarily. Uh, it's, all you're doing is, is, is getting your footwork uh, back in line with where the ball is and timing. Uh, more than likely, you start the ball a little bit early. So one of those steps is a really short step, very close to your slide. And all that does is get you back in time. So if it's consistent, keep it. Nothing wrong with that. You know. The book says, the book, that was a flat 10, by the way, anyway, watching. Um, six pin laid just right in the gutter. Um, you know, this is what the book says, but I'm going to tell you that probably the greatest bowler of all time, Walter Ray Williams, uh, Jr., uh, is far from what the, the, the book says on technique. Uh, Walter, Walter uses a lot of muscle. Walter has a lot of moving parts. He's got 47 national titles. So, you know, this is what the book says we should do, but I'm going to tell you, you know, if you're consistent at doing what you do, it's fine. Exactly. That's Walter's follow-through. Um, 47 national titles, it, it, it can't be wrong. So it's more about consistency and doing the same thing each time. So should you readjust your approach? Not necessarily. Now, if you're inconsistent, then yes, you might want to take a look at maybe changing some things. <laughs> what are your thoughts on turbo grips? Um, you know, there's, there's a few grip companies out there right now. Uh, it's just like bowling ball manufacturers. Uh, they're, they're all outstanding. Um, you know, uh, Dave Bernhardt, the owner and founder of, uh, of Turbo. Uh, now his daughter, uh, Lori uh, Mraz, is running the company. They've done an outstanding job in the industry. Um, and, and they give back quite a bit to the industry. But guess what? So does John Jamison and Vice Grips and Cecil Scarborough with Vice Grips. They, they, they do the same thing. They all have outstanding product. And now Ultimate, uh, Ultimate has some out, out, outstanding grips uh, and slugs out there. Um, Mark Sullivan out of Indianapolis. So, you know, there are a little bit different textures. Each one kind of has a little bit tex different texture and feel. Find the ones that work for you. That, that's all I can say. But all, all, the, all the grip companies out there make outstanding product right now. How do you throw a spin? I can only throw a straight ball. Uh, spin, you need to create some rotation. Uh, the, again, this is where that one-step drill comes into play, working on the technique. Get around the side of the ball a little bit. So if you're going straight up the back of it, so if, you're, if, if your fingers are going from, if you draw a clock, if your fingers are going from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock, you're not creating any rotation, not creating any axis rotation. You want to get around the side of the ball. A ball, if you're right-handed, a ball can't go right to left unless it's rotating right to left. 
So use that one step drill and work on getting around the side of the ball. Go take your fingers and go from six to three, from six o'clock to three o'clock and get around the side of the ball. I move the hip as, as the ball is going into my backswing. If you're right-handed, you should be drifting just a little bit to the left and that gets that hip out of the way. Um, so your hip should get out of the way. Um, there's only a couple bowlers I know of that walk absolutely straight. Um, Chris Barnes, <laughs> the, the position he starts at in his stance is where he finishes at the foul line. I cannot walk straight when I bowl. I, I've tried. It's very hard for me to do. I have to walk out of the way a little bit. So yes, you should get your hip out of the way as your ball is going into your backswing. <laughs> Got a funny one out there for a chicken or bee. How about, sea, how about uh, salmon? Throw a curveball at you. Where can I find a coach? Um, if you go to bowl.com, there's a tab up there that literally says find a coach. So go to bowl.com, find a coach. If you're anywhere in the central Florida area, uh, anywhere close by, send me a message, private message. You can, uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can send me an email at jgaines at bowlersmart.com. Uh, send me a message, be happy to help you out. But otherwise, go to bowl.com, and uh, there's literally a tab on there that says find a coach. How do you know if you're using the right weight? Um, the, the, the stand over there, Michael. So the, the correct weight of the bowling ball, you should be able to hold it in one hand fairly comfortable like that. You shouldn't be able to like bounce it up and down like that. That would be too light. And if, if you, if exactly, if, if it's too heavy, it'll automatically go really right to the ground. So how do you know what right, what the right weight is? You should be able to pick the ball up and hold it in one hand without it dropping straight to the, to the floor. How do you go down and into the pocket? Practice, man. Uh, Ronald, I don't know how else to tell you that. Um, one of the best things I ever did was learn how to throw the ball straighter. And I'm going to tell you, it took me about six months of working on it. And I, I, I probably threw, if I threw one gutter ball, I threw 400 gutter balls trying to play out on the gutter. It just, it just takes practice. you got to use less rotation. Get your fingers going for more from six to three, not rotate around the side of it. And you also got to get your vision close, uh, feeling comfortable of just playing closer to the gutter, closer to the channel. Um, you you, you got to practice it. So Michael's kind of demonstrating here. You just you move to the right and you work on it. You practice. Just like that. You know, and it doesn't have to necessarily strike. You know, the condition you're bowling on may not call for it. But in order to get better at it, you need to physically get out there and do it and just work on it. What? Getting that little less leverage position with your hand to help, you know, just Right, and, and a little bit less rotation and less, less leverage. What's the compensation for late timing? Uh, slow the approach. You can slow the approach as long as the ball stays at the same speed. So it, it, you, can, you can move the ball faster. You can move the ball earlier, or you can slow your feet down a touch. The trick is, if you slow your feet down a touch, you need to keep the ball moving to get it a little bit earlier. So ideally, you just move, you know, move the move the ball a little bit earlier. How do I stop from not walking in a straight line on my approach? Um, that's when you'd want to, if, if you're right-handed, make sure your right foot is crossing over in front of your left foot. If you're, if you're right, if you're right-handed and, and you're, uh, you want to crawl and you want to drift a little bit, um, and you should drift a little bit to the left if you're right-handed, um, make sure your right foot is crossing in front of your left, and that will make your left foot go, your next step go a little bit to the left, and you, you won't walk in a straight line anymore. Again, how do I stop leaving flat tens? We've covered that a couple times. If you just go back in and watch the beginning of the video, we get to it fairly early. Actually, about the middle uh, when, when we first moved to the to the uh, uh, 
So watching the footwork from behind, watching the arm swing from behind. Flat 10 is when the ball's too strong. Use a weaker ball. Rain 10 is when the 6-pin gets up and around the 10-pin. Ball's going too far. You need something to roll a little bit sooner. Okay. Well, I have a bunch of like slow motion stuff on YouTube that shows like the ball yeah, going so through the pin. Yeah, so and where is that at, Michael? So my YouTube channel is SK8S, so it's Skate Bowling Reviews. If you go on there, I got a lot of slow motion videos that show the ball going through the pins and why you're leaving different pins. So go to YouTube, uh, SK number eight. Uh, so it's spelled skate, skate bowling. Skate with an S. Skate. Skates bowling. Bowling reviews. Okay, skates yep. bowling reviews, and the the skate is with the with the number eight. Skates bowling reviews, and Michael's got a bunch of videos on there, and it shows some of the ball motion. And those are called language of the pins. So you'll be able to see like what the pins are doing while you're leaving different pins, and even a few ideas and adjustments on what you need to do to get rid of them. Okay, what is a good drill for more lift? One step drill or the stationary drill at the foul line? Work on that technique. Your fingers have to be below the equator of the ball. All right, so we've actually reached our one hour. Uh, come on over here, Michael. We're going to kind of reverse this. It's hard to believe how uh, how fast an hour goes sometimes. Uh, you know, we, we we get started on these. Uh, maybe not like I don't know, when you're throwing all the shots, it lasts a little while. It lasts a little longer when you're actually throwing them. I had to get out of lights because it'll affect my hair there. Sorry. Um, you know, this, this hour goes really fast. Uh, grab that fire over there. Again, we do have a, a, a clinic coming up with Amleto Monticelli. Uh, myself and Amleto. Sorry about that. Backwards. Uh, so myself and Amleto is going to be a boardwalk bowl. January 28th and 29th, uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, either day is 149, lunch included. If you want to come both days, it's 249. Uh, get to work with, with, with this guy here, Amleto Monticelli. Yeah, he's kind of okay. Uh, PBA Hall of Fame, USBC Hall of Fame. Um, you know, been on tour for, my goodness, 30 years. Uh, so anybody that's a player, I'm going to tell you, if you're, if you're struggling uh, bowling regionals, and you want to learn, you know, you just, you're struggling getting a check. If you're anywhere within a couple hour drive of the Central Florida area, um, you, you really need to, to, to come to this and learn and learn from one of the best players of, uh, in the PBA history. All right? I, I get tired of, and Michael's laughing behind me, I get tired of listening to people, you know, I struggle all the time, and, you know, I, I can never get a check, and I'm going to go drill a ball. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, it ain't the ball. You learn how to bowl a little bit better, and this is a great opportunity to learn how to do so. We'll kind of get that back. Um, there's no, nothing's going to help better than practice. And yes, you do have to have the right kind of practice. And that's kind of where today's tips are coming in to kind of give you some better ideas on, on some drills and what to work for. Um, if you go to bowlersmark.com and go to the coaching section, uh, there are a few articles on there that, that, that kind of talk about exactly what Michael and I worked on today. We worked on the physical game today. We're, uh, and it's broken up into, into several different parts. Uh, the stance, the approach, the footwork, and so on. Uh, so go to bowlersmark.com and kind of check that out. Uh, anybody wants to send me a private message, again, I'm on Facebook. You can message me. You can message me through the coaching corner. Uh, you can send me an email, uh, jgains at bowlersmark.com. Other than that, we'll be back again next Thursday at 11 a.m. East Coast time. Um, if you guys have any, uh, any ideas on, on, on tips, uh, or, or some ideas of, of what you'd like to see, please send me a message. I'll be happy to. Got a little message there from uh, Coach Shockley, uh, one of our protégés, uh, works at Bowlers Mart up in the uh, Chicago land, Rockford, Illinois area. Uh, a little cold up there, Coach Shockley. Uh, sorry it's only going to be 80 degrees here today. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody tuning in today. We'll see you again next Thursday. So see you next week. Thanks Thank again. You guys.